Jesus and his disciples arrived in Bethany on their way to Jerusalem. There they spent the night. Many people in Jerusalem heard that Jesus was there, and because Bethany was a short distance from Jerusalem, they went to see him. The next day, as Jesus and his disciples left Bethany, a large crowd followed them. On the road to Jerusalem, Jesus stopped and said to two of his disciples, Go into the next town, where two roads cross. There you will find a donkey tied with a colt with it. Bring him back to me. If anyone says, Why are you doing this? Tell them, The Lord has you, and they will let you go. The two disciples did as Jesus had told them. When they returned, some of the people with Jesus placed their coats on the donkey so it would be more comfortable for Jesus to ride. Others went into the fields to gather flowers, and still others cut green palm branches from the trees along the road. Then they formed a great parade. The crowd threw flowers in Jesus' path and waved palm branches in the air and shouted, The noise of the crowd was tremendous as the parade entered the city. temple, people from the city cried out to those following Jesus, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth in Galilee. He comes, he comes, he comes in the name of the Lord. He comes, he comes, he comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. that we are led by our children first and foremost in the joy of this day. Uh, join with me again in expressing your appreciation to what they offer us. And now would you stand and let us together offer our thanks and praise to God through the singing of our opening hymn.
Sisters, I greet you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who comes to the shouts of Hosanna, loud Hosanna, glory to God in the highest. May we live as his followers and may we follow him this week to the cross. Will you please turn and greet those around you in the name of Christ. way. I uh, would like to uh, offer you a, a couple of an, a more announcements uh, before we proceed with our worship today. Uh, first off, if you would like to order an Easter lily, those, East, those uh, forms are due today. You'll see a form uh, in your steeple. Uh, please place those in the offering plate. Uh, the, the money for the Easter lilies goes towards, further towards our mission project in Kenya uh, this summer. 
Uh, also, we'd like to invite you uh, this week on the front page of your steeple, you will notice that we have a list of all of our Holy Week service offerings. Uh, plenty of opportunities for you, and each worship service that we offer, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, each has a different focus and a different, is, a, is a, a different experience. And so, uh, would like, as I heard in a Sunday school class this morning, uh, you know, we can't have the joy of Easter morning without the grief and the sorrow of the cross and the events leading up to the cross. And so we encourage you this week to participate in our Holy Week worship services offered Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Child care is available at all of them. Again, friends, we are so blessed as a church family, and let us now be a blessing. I invite our ushers to come forward for the giving of God's tithes and our offerings. standing and children this is your time now to head to little church so please come down and head out that door and as the children are heading to little church I'll invite you to open your Bibles to mark 11 starting with the first verse
Hear now God's word from the gospel according to Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there tied a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Take my lips and speak through them. Take our thoughts and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. Unless you speak, nothing of significance will be spoken. Give us your word, Lord Jesus. Amen. Some years ago, while at the Carolina Opry, we enjoyed listening to Bogey as he did his act upon the stage. A part of that was talking with the MC about wives. The person who was the, the MC said that his wife was an angel. And Bogey said, mine's still living. <laughs> I say that because if the truth be known, not many of us ever in our lifetimes have been referred to as angels, but have been referred to probably as the opposite. I know in school I was, my teachers rarely ever called me an angel. I know that shocks many of you. <laughs> I spent a lot of time writing things on the blackboard of what I will not do when I am told not to do it. And in those days, we used chalk that squeaked. Remember that? We even had to make promises that we would be kind to one another and not say things to or about one another that we did not need to say. Remember those days? I want to introduce you to a woman whose name is Barbara, who in reminiscing about her days of being eight years old and in school and moving to a new town, how she recounts that she met a new friend whose name was Doug, and they called him Dougie. She says that I liked him because he let me boss him around, because I was a very bossy person. Whenever we pinched our, our tent in the yard to play house, I got to be the parent and Dougie got to be the child and had to do everything I said. When we pulled the old school desk out to play school, I got to be the teacher and Dougie got to be the student and do everything I asked. When we organized our club in the old barn, I got to be the club president and Dougie got to be the servant and I got to make all the rules. I like Dougie. I like Dougie a lot. All my friends from my old neighborhood would have demanded that we take turns being a parent or a teacher or a club president, but not Dougie. He wasn't like my two little brothers who spent their time whining and tattling to Mama. It's not fair. Tell Barbie not to be so bossy. They were such babies. 
Meanwhile, I had a great summer with my friend Doug who did not whine, did not complain, and let me be whatever I wanted to be. Even his mother was sweet. At four o'clock every afternoon, when most mothers were pushing the children outside to play so they could get on with fixing dinner, Doug's mom seemed delighted to fix us peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, let us eat in front of the television as we watched Dr. Max's Cartoon Club on Channel 6. Unfortunately, September came quickly and with it came school. That first morning was warm and my new clothes itched as Doug and I walked to school. I was nervous and sweaty, wondering where I should go and what my new teacher would be like and who my new friends would become. I was really glad to have Doug with me. I was, until the first taunt. Hey, look, who's the new girl with the retard? <coughs> I stared at Doug in shock. The panic in his eyes proved that it was true. Plain as day, I'd never seen it before, but I could see it now. My face turned red and I heard my own voice speaking. Who, him? I don't even know him. And I walked away in that moment. I did not see him again all day. The special education classes, as they were called back then, were all held in trailers, separated from the main building by several hundred yards, as if they had to be quarantined lest we might catch what they had. When I walked home that day, I went past Doug's house. His mom was sweeping the front sidewalk, and she just looked at me sadly, and I looked at the ground. It was after four in the afternoon. Dr. Max was on. Dougie was inside. Want to come in for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, she asked. I blushed and shook my head no, and I ran home. I felt naked, like she could see right through me. I had discovered in those moments what it is to recognize my own sin and to understand that the me I was and the me that Jesus wanted me to be were two very different people. That is why Jesus sends his disciples into town to borrow a colt, a donkey's colt. God is always working on the me that God wants us to have the opportunity to become. And there is a lesson in everything when it comes to Jesus. He tells his disciples that there is a creature in the town that has never before been ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone questions what you are doing, simply say, the Lord has need of it. And sure enough, some do question. And they give the answer that Jesus has instructed them to give. And the people seem satisfied. And the disciples go back to Jesus with this small colt, a donkey's colt. It is not an accident that it is a donkey's colt. The animal on which he enters Jerusalem is not a mighty steed, but a lowly beast of burden. Yet it is precisely what Jesus wants for several reasons. And the first reason is simply this, humility. God comes to win human hearts. God doesn't come to draft them into service. God comes to win people to the kingdom of God and does so with humility. The second reason is that God does not intend to stand head and shoulders above all people like one sitting on a mighty steed looking down upon them. No, God intends to be down on people's level where people can reach out and touch him, touching the hem of his garment, placing a hand upon his shoulder, because God is accessible to people always. The third reason is that God looks his people eye to eye. God doesn't look down on any human soul, not one, but he looks into every human soul. The parade is spectacular as Jesus is among the people, his people, looking into the eyes of human souls and hearts to convey the depth of God's love and grace, but also helping people to see themselves as they are. For when we look into the eyes of God, we see our own sin. We see our own shortcomings. We see the realities of who we are and how we are. And when I look into the eyes of God, I begin to understand 
that the me I am and the me that Christ desires me to be are very different people. God wants to borrow my heart and to remake it with His grace. Just as He borrowed a donkey on which to ride, so comes Jesus this day to borrow from all of us. To borrow the hatreds that live within us, that He might erase them. To borrow sorry attitudes and give us minds that are likened to that above. He comes to borrow our judgments and help us to live as encouragers of faith and God's grace. He comes to borrow our hurts and grant us healing. Our struggles that weigh us down to lift us up in its place and point us to peace. He comes to borrow from us the unkindnesses we reveal and to remove them from our lives that we might live with compassion and kindness to all, understanding that we are all a family given to one another as sacred gifts, and we will learn the words and the life of kindness. Jesus does not come and stand above us. He comes and stands eye to eye, that we might see our lives in His eyes and begin to see all of life through His eyes. The entry to Jerusalem is an entry into our living. It's an entry into our hearts for all of us this day. When we look into the eyes of Jesus Christ, there is a lot to see. There is a lot to surrender. There is a lot to be remade. And that is why He comes. That we might be remade in the image of a loving God whose love is defined by His Son hanging on a cross for all of us. Look deeply into His eyes this morning. See what you will see, but also see what can be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Scripture, how to use Scripture in our lives. First, by creating a house of prayer, 
and then second by uh, exhibiting the love of Christ in our own actions. And we're brought back to the story as Mary anoints uh, Jesus with the oil and, and presents the extraordinary uh, um, sacrifice of, of this uh, expensive oil. And he allows a, uh, a sinner, known sinner, to anoint him in this way. And then shortly thereafter, a, a, an angry mob of people come to find Christ and take him to the cross. And then we mourn that action in the final movement. This is the beautiful music of Mark Hayes and his friends uh, John and Audra Parker who, who composed the text and the narration. And the work is called Forsaken. Just, uh, just one more thing I might suggest that uh, uh, if you're inclined to applaud, um, do that outside after the service. <laughs> and for now, I'm going to ask you uh, if you would, uh, rather than treat this as a performance, accept it. Uh, as though you were part of the drama, and if you, how would you react uh, if you were in person, and uh, or that you might feel touched in that way? Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Hosanna! Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Hosanna! Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna! Hosanna! Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus, the prophet, hailed in joy and triumph.
After his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. And he spoke to them, saying, It is written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. When the chief priests and teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and heard the little children praising him in the temple with shouts of Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what the children are saying, they demanded? Jesus replied, Yes. Have you never read? From the lips of children you have ordained praise. Jesus the teacher, object of purest praise. Once again asking, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Jesus the priest, showing how to love the Father.
at the home of a man known as Simon the Leper. While there, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on him as he reclined at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were outraged and asked, Why this waste? This perfume could have been sold at a high price, and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Jesus, the beloved, anointed, blessed, prepared. With a child of Mary came to see the Lord. Broken spirit on the master, down onto the floor it poured. Some who said that the table questioned why she acted so. Why would Jesus let a sinner such a wasteful action show? I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and 
gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take and drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which will be poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Not understanding the significance of all that was happening, a dispute arose among the disciples as to which of them was considered to be greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentile lord it over them, but you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the least, and the one who rules like the one who serves. Who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up and removed his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. He poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. When Peter tried to prevent his master from washing his feet, Jesus rebuked him gently. You do not understand what I'm doing now, but later you will understand. Unless I wash you, you will have no part of me. Jesus, the servant, remembered, revered, betrayed. saying, 
We have found this man subverting our nation. He claims to be Christ, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the son? Are you the king of the Jews? You are right in saying that I am. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You have brought me this man as one who was inciting rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and release him. With one voice, they cried out, Away with this man! Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appeared before them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! With loud shouts, they demanded he be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand and surrendered Jesus to their will. Triumph turns to tragedy. Praise to persecution. Blessing to betrayal. Remembrance to rejection. The servant becomes the sacrifice. Jesus, the Son of God, forsaken. Forsaken. Forsaken.
Go now and live as those who have looked into the eyes of Christ and know exactly what you need to know. Go in prayer. Go in peace. Go in hope. Amen.